Hey, what is going on, everybody? This is Penn. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is episode 11 of Penn Talks. It's been about three months since I did um, my personal podcast. <clears throat> I think last episode I was clearing up um, some misinformation, things like that, where someone had a uh, thought I was getting paid off by doing or something, you know, not doing the research or whatever. But uh, by the time this airs on YouTube, it will be Saturday. And, you know, it's April 20th, 2024. There is a big, big fight um, on the zone pay-per-view um, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. And I will be watching that on the super box you know i did a youtube short of it and i will be dropping a first impressions video um sunday so which will be tomorrow now before we get into it um the pre-loaded boxes uh versus uh diy so the videos, you know, that has been on my channel as of late in terms of um, content wise as related to streaming or core cutting has been about preload devices in which beginners can come on and just jump into the media that they would like to watch. Now, I did feel as though it would be a good idea to just to start off educating some people beginners on investing in your network you know getting your own equipment if necessary and also um just being more in control when you're starting off just getting rid of that cable bill and then seeing if you can get your own equipment you can definitely save a lot more money in the long run and you are not paying those rental fees now i'm gonna tell you why a lot of uh people may be skeptical or you have maybe saw big channels in the past talk about preload devices um being a very you know it's a red flag because you don't have any control over it. You have zero control over it and things like that. Um, which is quite which is quite interesting uh, if, if you think about it, because back in the day, and I can only speak for me, I don't know about anybody else. I was going on um, websites. I was using, um, you know, different websites to watch content you know on a computer and I, I did the whole connect the computer to your television via HDMI I did all that and I didn't have control back then um, really all I cared about was getting to my media at the time this was still when I was in grade school and I had like just some crappy AT&T internet. It was like DSL or something, right? But I made things work. Um, to make a long story short on this segment, wind up crashing the computer. Uh, I was downloading some games and things like that. You know, caught some viruses, blue screen of death. And then my parents will always have to call, you know, the computer people to come and essentially fix the computer for me you know this was ages ago at this point um so i will use like a playstation 3 whenever that happened and i will always get to my content to where i will use the browser and then i would like stream it if it was possible the playstation 3 browser was crappy at times man to think that i was using that and at the time of you using like uh, a PC browser, the performance was still staggering. However, um, I made it work, but I wind up downloading some content through there. The point that I'm getting is that when you start off with a preloaded boxes for a beginner may seem very interesting to those that 
simply do not want to do the work or they don't want to do the hassle. Um, one of the things about it is you see reviews to where, oh, uh, these devices are preloaded with malware. Uh, I think you need to do your research uh, for those of you that are making those claims. Um, I have the Stream XX1 Pro. I, haven't, I have not seen anything abnormal on those devices. Uh, also, I am currently testing the Superbox. Once again, I'm not seeing anything abnormal. These are things that I do test um, when I put the device on my network and I do scan these type of devices. These are just, and they're not highly specced Android devices. The specs on these are more than enough to run IPTV. And just really, what you're paying for is a peace of mind and a service. Now granted, the service has to be stable and the channels have to be, you know, maintained and it does have to be like a smooth experience for everyone overall. Excuse me. But <clears throat> what I find interesting is, um, you know, the hustlers, you know, the dealers and I'm, I'm, I'm a hustler myself, you know, businessman, I like to say, um, may some smart investments as of late and I'm going to continue to um, network and you know learn things as I go along I find it funny um, you know nowadays they're saying oh the preloaded boxes you know are rip off and you know this that and the third you know you can do better but these were the same people that was um, in the streets when it pertains to Cody and who knows just because they got an android box back then on a good sale that that doesn't mean that they gave their customers a discount as well to where let's say if someone bought and you guys know what i'm talking about if you were around back then and doing the hustling these chinese stock android devices that might have came pre-installed with malware some of you made a killing off of it because you were going you was going through Cody and you was downloading someone's build and you were um you know maybe you had some sort of like maintenance or cleaner however you organized it <coughs> and essentially I've seen prices upwards of 200 150 300 plus wasn't any of my business back then, but you, you heard about some things, um, especially because, you know, they were popular when it came to sports, the live TV, or of course, the new circled around the barbershops, um, you know, a cousin that do it, you know, you know, your homeboy that do it, your homegirl. The point that I'm making is that they sold preloaded boxes because that they were preloaded when it came to the clientele, you know, with the customers. When they plugged it into their monitor or television and they hooked it up to their network, it was already an application on a device. And they paid the price based off of the seller. They were service. There was options for movies. There were options for TV. And there were options for live. And guess what? The person that sold the box or the device and the person who purchased the device, they did not have control over the content. Now, <laughs> you fast forward about five or six years later. Now you're hearing things like, oh, Preloaded devices, it's a scam, it's a ripoff. You can do better. Mm, you was eating off of doing preloaded content. Now that there's more options, 
Well, I, I can't say more options. The, the preloaded concept has been a thing for quite a while now. I've seen things where services go down, companies, and they come right up under a different name. Classic example, <laughs> well, let's say recent. It's a pity. Um, it's a pity was in the hardware business when it came to providing media player options for those that wanted their own home theater experience. You know, they were options to start your own media library. And when all the information came out about the company, and you can look this up on YouTube, it was people making content left and right. And essentially, they came up under a different name and literally it was a replica of one of their like existing units. It just had the new company name and logo over it. And I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these um, services or devices is like that as well. I, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't. I would not put it past them because I didn't seen it before. I didn't seen it. And you shouldn't be surprised at this as well. But yeah, but I'm definitely going to be watching the pay-per-view. Um, Ryan and um, Devin. And I think the overall fight card is going to be, um, you know, pretty entertaining. You know, I won't be able to give like my full impressions until after, you know, fight after the pay-per-view ends. But I'm pulling for Devin. Um, I don't think the fight is going to go all the rounds. I think it's going to be a stoppage, TKO, or just Ryan going to wind up quitting when he gets hit with certain shots. The corner may stop it or the ref may stop it. Uh, those are my scenario predictions in terms of the main event. And that's just how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at all the antics and what Ryan did leading up to the fight. And I'm looking at what Devin is known for. Fundamentally, he's better in every aspect than Ryan Garcia. Um, it is what it is, you know. I think he's going to probably win almost every round if it does go the distance, which I seriously doubt. But it's boxing. And also, uh, let me know down in the comment section or while this premiere is going on, you know, who are you pulling for and why? So, yeah, so that's just something that's, um, that's been on my mind that I've been wanting to get out. You know, podcasting is really not the forefront of my channel, but I do like doing these type of formats. You know, sometimes you'll see my face and you'll see like some gameplay this time I'm switching it up. It's just pure background and voice um, to where I'm just going back to the more organic feel that I had with it. But, uh, man, the interesting, interesting. I did see uh, Doom Part 2. I know it's in the theaters for a little while now. Um, I just haven't had the time to like go invest and see it and I'm like you know what I'm just gonna wait for it to come out because you know I, I, I got the hook up essentially um, boy that MB cloud that automation is stellar all I have to do is turn on my TV <laughs> and get some popcorn and you know just vibe out and you know and that's what I teach, you know, consultation wise behind the scenes. For those of y'all that are interested, you can find my information in the video description. Well, I tell people and I show people how to be more efficient with their time and how to use technology to supplement their income or make money so that your life is easier. You know, once you learn a hard way, you know, work smarter, not harder. Um, and it's just something that I've just taken to another level these past few years. But I finished the movie earlier. 
um, before I sat down and recorded this podcast. And man, that was something. That's how you do a part two, especially in the in the realm of Doom. Um, I did not see the original. Um, did not read any of the original materials or whatever the case may be. Man, cinematography, lighting, the composition, and the ending almost, you know, it, it had me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, whoa, like, <laughs> is this really going to go down? And then it hits you, that kill switch. That's all I'm going to say. But definitely check out uh, Doom. If you have not seen that, check it out. It's available digitally. So if you got Voodoo, um, Apple, you know, iTunes, movies, things like that. Movies anywhere. Uh, definitely check it out. Now... <clears throat> One thing that I do want to get into is this, because honestly, this is just more of like a freestyle. You know, I'm just chopping it up with y'all. I'm not reading from no script. I'm just doing this at the top of the dome. So I will say this. I've been looking at the state of um, hip hop, you know, what's going on. It's man, it's, it's it's a lot going on. Like this is left and right. Um, Kendrick Lamar had a verse on the like that, and that sparked some interest. You know, that got some some people listening. Be like, okay, who's going to respond? And he took a dig at uh, J Cole and Drake, more so Drake than J Cole, but. J. Cole responded first. I believe it was the song Seven Minute Drill. And, you know, it was, in my personal opinion, a solid response to what you will expect in that situation. You know, nothing too crazy, but hey, like, this is just a warning shot. And then I think he was, like, performing at, like, a show or an event. And he felt the need to uh, retract the statements and basically wave the right flag and apologize to Kendrick. And I just thought that was like, you know, sort of weird. And he, he sort of like stepped away from it because um, when Kendrick made that line of a hey, uh, fuck the big three it's just big me, you know, J. Cole made that um, big three reference on the song first person shooter. You know with Drake and my whole thing of it is if that's really your homie or your homeboy or if y'all really friends ain't no way I'm hearing a cat say F the big three is just big me and I'm going to like wave the white flag or I don't know it's it's, it's just weird I, I think it's a video on YouTube that explained that for quite a while now J. Cole and Kendrick been like sneak dissing each other um, and, and you know in, including Drake and Kendrick you know like this, this stuff goes a, a little bit back you know Drake even talked about it on his um, dropping give me 50 or push ups you know that was his diss to Kendrick's like that verse and um, he said that it, it's been brewing up so but boy he definitely, he kept the overall focus on Kendrick, but he went at a few people. Um, Future, I think like that first opener, I, I can never be nobody's number one fan. Your first number one, I have to give it like he, because <laughs> it was something where Future said that Drake is his number one fan. And, you know, I'm like, dang. That's crazy. Uh, John ja Morant, he dissed him. Shit, he, he went to uh, Rick Ross. <laughs> and he came back with his track, like, that same day that the um, Drake uh, diss dropped. 
so that was um that was pretty crazy you know like like last weekend for hip-hop was crazy and it was entertaining though that's one thing about it and uh i'm all for it you know as long as they hopping in a booth nobody's like trying to link up you know or pull their pistol out or do do something that get them like in trouble or landed in jail prison you know they just handle this stuff on the mic and i'm all for it uh, I, I just don't know why j cole um just waved the white flag like that but then again he could think all oh, this is petty and he's protecting his peace but he got a album coming out and the way cole been rapping these past few years especially you know like he's trying to like prove something and you know, he, he has that chip on his shoulder and he is rapping like he's gunning for that top spot or has the top spot. But then when your boy Kendrick came at you and when you responded, you responded with some good energy. Um, he just didn't keep the same energy. And, you know, Drake even mentioned on, on his diss track, he was like, and I don't care about cold thing, that dot shit was weak as fuck. That's in reference, you know, Dot is Kendrick, you know, um, K Dot is Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. So Drake is talking to Cole. He was like, and, and I don't care what you say. That Dot shit was weak as fuck. And, you know, I'm not apologizing for it. So that's kind of a shot at Cole, too, if you think about it. <laughs> if you think about it, it's kind of a shot at Cole. But hey, listen, this is um interesting, and then with this latest one, um, I think he uh, titled the song "Taylor Made." Yeah, Taylor Made freestyle, something like that. But he's using like AI, and um, he used Tupac on the first <laughs> verse. And then Snoop on the second verse, and then on the third verse, uh, it was Drake continuing, continuing off of what they were saying, and it's basically a record playing with um, Kendrick's emotions, um, to where you know Drake is like trolling and he's toying with him, to where one of the, one of the major disses at Drake, or what people talk about is when um, Meek mentioned, and I believe it was on Twitter. Because he was in his feelings over something about Drake not tweeting his album or promoting his album. Because, you know, they were supposed to be homies or homeboys. And he like, well, why ain't you promoting me like you promoting everybody else? Or, But case in point, right? He mentioned that he had ghostwriters. So, since all these other rappers or some people would, would throw like sneak disses or mention that he has ghostwriters... Drake came out with another diss at Kendrick and had a hip hop legend who many people believe is actually dead and not living in Cuba. Like Eminem said on, on a track, he brought out a ghost and he used his, he used Tupac's, uh, it, it's an AI voice, but you can tell that Drake wrote it. It's his flow. It's, it's the way his the delivery is on a track. And he did that with Snoop Dogg as well. Then he came back and applied his own verse and his own, you know, voice aimed at Kendrick. And, you know, he used what <laughs> he used the legends that Kendrick definitely know and some of his inspirations growing up. And it's, it's, it's a track that hypes Kendrick's up, but also tears Kendrick down at the same time. And the, the way that thing was worded, bro, Kendrick got to respond. So now you so you want to smoke. Now you got the smoke. And, and that's what Drake is applying. He's applying that pressure. And he, he mentioned like uh, at the record label, how Taylor Swift, um, he has to get like approval from her because she's the biggest artist in the industry right now.